Okay, okay, welcome to another exciting edition of Mr. Savage Photography. And so today, today is a, a, a different kind of day. Today you're going to be using some new software, and y'all know what you're thinking. You're going, wait a minute, we're still like working in Photoshop, right? Yes, kind of, sort of. Here's what's different. You're going to be using something called Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. You're gonna, I know you're, you're kind of thinking, I'm still I'm like brand new with Photoshop. Yes, I know, but we're kind of just expanding out a little bit. Now, let's take a quick look at, at my computer here and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here. Now you see right here, it says Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. What exactly is Lightroom anyways? It actually employs the exact same engine that Photoshop does for making all of these different changes. Remember how we changed our brightness contrast, we changed our exposure, we changed our, our um, white balance and all of that. And you remember how we had to do several different clicks in several different places? Lightroom is a, a great program for allowing you to make a lot of these changes to your picture, but you're doing it in one place. One stop shopping is what I like to think of it as, one stop shopping. And so there will be times whenever I send you to Photoshop to do some things, because Photoshop can do some things that Lightroom can't. But what Lightroom allows you to do is do a bunch of pictures quickly. I'll tell you right now, me and, me and my wife, we've been in the photography business for almost 20 years now, and we do weddings. And we use Lightroom all of the time. Whenever we want to, we call them culling. That means eliminating a bunch of pictures and keeping the good ones and then processing out all those. We use it all the time because it would be impractical for us to open all those pictures in Photoshop. We open some of them in Photoshop if we need to fix something, but a lot of them we do in Lightroom. And so I want you to learn Lightroom too, because it will allow you to, let's say you go and your family drives up to Yosemite, or maybe you drive to the coast for the weekend or something like that, and you want to you want to process a bunch of pictures really quick, but you don't want to take the time to open each one of those in Photoshop and do all those different settings that I've taught you how to do, and there will be more to come, believe me. What it allow you to do is process, let's say you spend the weekend in Pismo, you could process out all your pictures from Pismo all in one sitting. And so it's kind of cool. So I want you to know both. It's not like we're, it's not like we're throwing out Photoshop by any means or, or thinking that Lightroom is the best thing ever. No, they both work together. And so sometimes we'll use one, sometimes we'll use the other. But in this case, we're going to use Lightroom. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at my screen here. And you'll notice you see just a big blank area here where it says Photoshop Lightroom. And you see that right at the top there? So you'll notice there's a bunch of menu items across the top. Although I have to tell you what's interesting about the menu items is you use them a lot less in Lightroom than you do in Photoshop and stuff. It's kind of interesting. Um, in Lightroom, you're going to be using a lot more of the settings on the a lot, a lot more of your less menu settings and a lot more of the settings for adjusting your images. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says file. Notice there's new catalog, and there's opening catalogs, and there's exporting. Ooh, you're going to use that one. You're definitely going to use that one. And then there's exit. I'm just taking a quick glance through here. Edit. You can redo or undo all those things like that. You're going to basically be selecting things as flagging to begin with. We'll do some of that, but it's also available right down here. Um, uh, there's libraries where you can basically set up some settings that you want to reuse. Photos, you're going to be doing this to where you just kind of make some basic corrections to it. But again, a lot of this is available right down in this working area down here. Metadata, we won't worry about too much. That basically is every time you take a picture, your camera will record all of the information on your camera. So we'll talk a lot about exposure over the year. And what it's going to do is record all that exposure data. And so that's called metadata. So that's basically what this menu item's for. View is simply for changing all the different views that you see on your screen. Window shows, again, all the different uh, ways that you can adjust your image and help but I'm here to help you. All right, so let's take a look. Notice how it kind of looks all blank here. Oh, before I do that though, let me show you these little tabs across the top. They're kind of like the menu items, 
but they're for specifically processing out your pictures. And when I say process, by the way, it means making your changes. In other words, you're changing your exposure, you're changing your contrast, you're changing your white balance, you're changing your color balance, all those different things that affect how your image looks, okay? And so you see these tabs right across the top area, right here you have the library tab, and that's how we're gonna look at our images. The first thing you wanna do is, as I said, we use this for our wedding business, and we use it for looking at all the pictures because we want to give our clients the best images possible. All right, so we throw away all the ones where maybe somebody was blinking, maybe somebody like they were eating and they were putting food in their mouth. We wanna get rid of all of those. We don't wanna give our clients things that aren't like the best work that I can possibly give. And so you go through the library tab and you'll be able to look at all of your pictures and do that. And then we take, uh, take it through the develop tab and in the develop tab we'll get to in just a minute, but you're going to then be making changes to your images, making them look better, okay? Honestly, all these other tabs to the right, the map, the book, the slideshow, the print, and the web, they don't even use that so much. They're there, but Honestly, it's not something that I use for my business. Map basically means like, let's say you took a trip to Europe. You could actually click there. And if you have a GPS enabled camera, it will actually say, oh, hey, you talk, took this picture in Rome, which is kind of a, a neat thing, but I haven't been to Rome in a long time. So, eh. Book is if you were gonna make a book out of some of your pictures. But honestly, there's other ways that I would make a book rather than using Lightroom, so I don't actually use that. And then same thing, there's a thing here called Slideshow. I'm going to close this one here. There's a thing called Slideshow, like if you were going to make a slideshow, maybe you're going to make a slideshow in Mr. Sisk's class for, for your science project and you wanted to export out a slideshow, you could actually do a slideshow right in here. But again, um, we're going to focus on the library and the develop tab. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is a catalog that I had open from last year, but let's look at it. I can actually go through here, and here's a picture. Believe it or not, I shot this right outside of my classroom. I mean, literally, right outside of my classroom. It was a rainy day, it was pretty. There were some leaves that were blowing in, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take one of those pictures. And so, there it is right there. And uh, right outside of room 82, by the way. If you haven't been around, or we don't go on campus for a while, so that's room 82 right there. And you know, I kind of just, saw this beautiful reflection. I saw this cool leaf. I didn't move it. It was there. And so I just kind of walked along and said, you know what, that's a cool picture. And so it kind of brings up the, the point of like, I'm hoping with this class, you learn to open your eyes. Because I remember the first time I took photography, it caused me to open my eyes and look at the world and kind of go, you know what, that's really, that's a really neat thing. Sometimes the simplest things are the most beautiful. And uh, I remember I had this art professor in college and he didn't invent this, it's been around for a long time, but he, he always talked about the KISS principle and it stands for keep it simple. He said stupid, but I'll tell you guys, keep it simple, silly. So sometimes you can get the best images by just looking for the most simple and beautiful images. Look at that, it's just one leaf, one reflection. It's nice interaction of light and shadow and it just looks really cool. I love the way the water kind of sticks on the leaf there and it was just, it was interesting, so I was kind of drawn to it. So keep it simple, kids. Keep it simple. All right, so in the library tab, this is where you're going to go through and you're going to find your images, your, your favorite pictures. And so what you'll do is you'll click on one. I'm just kind of going through really quick here, and we'll just look. I'm using actually, by the way, my right and my left arrow on the keyboard. So I'm kind of going through. You see I processed that one, and I processed that one a little bit too. And I did that one too, just slightly different cropping each time, you know, do some variations, do something different. Notice here's what it looked like before. You'll notice it's a completely different looking image. It's kind of flat looking, you know, and flat means lacking contrast. And you'll see actually in the background right up here, that's actually the um, the portable in the background, you know. Portables are fine. I'm going to be in one next year because they're remodeling my room this coming school year. Um, however, that's not such a pretty thing. Portables are just kind of not so nice. So I wanted to get rid of that. So you can see in the previous image, look, look at that. Look how much better it, it looks. I will tell you this now, but I will say it again repeatedly throughout the year. It is as important what you include in your image as what you exclude in your image. I'll say that again. It's as important what you include in your image as what you exclude in your image. I think I said that backwards. Get rid of stuff in your picture. Is what I'm telling you. You'll look through, look at a picture and sometimes you get really caught up with, oh, that's a cool looking picture. Look at that, I want that right there. And you go click and then you don't realize, oh my gosh, it's a piece of trash stuck in the background. Oh, that's not very good. Look at that piece of trash. Oh, yeah, man, why did I, 
What was I thinking? Why didn't I see that? And so we do this thing called cropping, which I'll show you how to do in Lightroom. You can also do it in Photoshop too, to where you selectively eliminate parts of your picture that don't work for the picture so much. And I've done it, I've done it, every photographer has done it where it's like, oh, what did I leave that in there for? Because you get so caught up in the image that you forget to take out the part. So, so we'll actually take out the background there. And you'll notice right there, yeah, took that out. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to let, I'm gonna bring up some new pictures here. And so I'm gonna actually go in every time that you bring in some pictures, I'm gonna minimize this here, by the way, and you'll see. We're gonna bring in some new pictures and we're gonna make a new catalog. If I go into my picture folder, there it is right there, click. And I brought in some pictures that basically, I called it a Lightroom demo. And there's a bunch of pictures here that were shot in Yosemite. So I'm gonna bring all of those into Lightroom. So I'm gonna go into Lightroom. And every time you make a new, Every time you go out and shoot a new assignment and you're gonna use Lightroom, because sometimes I'm gonna tell you, you have to use Photoshop with this, and sometimes I'll tell you, you have to use Lightroom with this. In this case, this is assignment number three, and so we're gonna be using Lightroom. Um, I honestly can't tell you what, what assignment number three is. I'll tell you whenever we're in class and we're sitting here talking, whether it's in person or whether it's in a Zoom meeting, but I'll tell you what it is. I'd like for it to be motion, but that means that I need to hand you a camera. And if I can't hand you a camera, I will tell you that I'll give you a different assignment, but we'll call it right now just assignment number three, okay? When I say motion, I'm talking about pictures in motion. So at some point during the year, we'll do that. Let me show you what a motion picture is. Uh, I shot these last year for like water polo. Here's what motion looks like. I'm gonna open these really quick and click click i'm going to open those i'll open them really quick in photoshop and you can see what what motion pictures look like but i can't guarantee we're going to do it because i want to well at some point during the year i hopefully we'll be able to hand you a camera to where you can actually shoot pictures that look like this see that right there where you have that ball frozen right there in space and you can just see every droplet of water so we'll be able to take pictures like this so we should shoot pictures like this for your book and so, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to go for. Excuse me. But if I can't hand you a camera, then it's going to make that a little difficult. So I'll tell you whenever we actually get to there, whenever we're actually doing this assignment, okay? All right, so I'm going to close that window. And we're going to go back to Lightroom. And in Lightroom, let's go ahead and make a new catalog. I'm going to go new catalog. And every time you shoot a new assignment, make a new catalog. I'll tell you that again. Every time you make a new assignment, make a new catalog. It's just a way to keep things keep, keep things organized. Same thing like in your science class where you, if you have one assignment, you don't want to get it mixed up with your next assignment and your next assignment. So it's always good to make a new catalog. So I'm going to go to File and New Catalog. And it's going to say, well, what would you like to call this? That's what this dialog box is right here. What would you like to call this? And I'm going to call it Assignment 3. Now, I'm hoping that's a motion assignment. Hoping that's a motion assignment. But I can't guarantee it. And so like I said, I'll tell you whenever we're actually doing it, I'll tell you if I have a camera in your hands, but if not, we'll work something out. Okay, and so I'm gonna put it into my Lightroom lesson folder, because that's where I brought in some pictures that I shot in Yosemite there. So I'll put it in my Lightroom lesson folder and it's called assignment number three. You could call it, if it's a motion assignment, you'll call it that. And so I'm going to go there, and I just made a new catalog. And it, this is uh, basically saying you want to back this up. And I'm going to say skip this time, but backing up isn't a bad idea. And you can back it up to your OneDrive. Remember how we had a OneDrive lesson recently? So we're doing that. So basically my screen all disappeared. You say, hey, what the heck did it do? It's thinking. It's thinking. It's building me a new catalog. All right, and we're back. I apologize for that. It clicked, it clicked off right in the middle of my importing here. So yeah, I'm gonna work on my software and make it so I can do longer recording. So in any case, let me re-import again, okay? So right down here, I click on import, or I can also go up to the top and say import photos and videos. Either one, they both do the same thing. So it's gonna ask me, where are they at? And you notice these are all folders right here. 
And so with these folders, I'm going to click through here and say, hey, you know what? Let's get all these. Now, do I have to import all of them? Nope. I could click off of them and just click, hey, that one, and I want that one. And if I hold down the uh, control key, I could click more than one. But I, I want all the photos. So I can click right there, and I can get all of them into here. I click on import, and here they come. It's going to take a second. It's going to draw them all up here for us. And there they are. And so let's go ahead and double click on these and we'll take a look. There it is with some pictures we shot in Yosemite. By the way, I'm using my arrow keys to kind of cruise through these pictures. Okay, a bunch of Yosemite pictures. See some some of them are before and afters. So there they all are. Pictures we shot when we were up in Yosemite, so those are nice. So generally speaking, you're not going to, you're certainly not going to turn in everything that you shoot. And you're not going to um, probably process everything you shoot too. The whole idea is that you just find your best things and you're going to then process those. So let's say we're doing um, an assignment here. Like I said, maybe you'll be doing motion for your third assignment, but I can't say that for a fact because I don't know if I'm going to have cameras in your hands. And those of you who watch this after COVID, yes, you'll have a camera in your hands. But at this point, um, I don't know if I can have cameras in your hand. So it, uh, you'll have something to shoot for assignment number three. But let's go ahead and let me show you some processing. So what you're doing, though, is looking through here and you're going to be marking the ones that you like. And how exactly do you mark? My favorite way to do it is just to say, yes, I like this. You'll notice I just hit the one key and that just said set the rating to one. And you'll see how there's a little star right here. If I hit two, boom, I really like it. And three, ooh, I like it even more. Four, oh, it's phenomenal. And five, yes, I'm going to hang that one on my wall. I actually do have this picture on my wall at some point. But I can also then go back to just say one. What I like to do is actually just one and zero. It's kind of a binary thing. Yes, I like it. No, I don't like it. And then I can kind of figure it out for later once I process all of them and, and take them out of here. So I basically just say one and zero. And so if you look right down here, you can see there's a little tiny one star right there. So I just do one and zero. There's other ways of doing it too as you look through here. And by the way, you're gonna look through and see is it in is it in focus, is it sharp? So I'm kind of just cruising through with the hand thing. I clicked on it and then clicked off of it. So yeah, that's a nice one right there. There's other ways to do it too. You can actually just click on this right here. There's flags. There's little flags in there. Notice I just clicked on that right there. Uh, there's ways of doing the flags. See flags, flag is pick or flag is rejected. That's the other has a little X on it. So you can do that. I tend to like the stars and so you can just pick them as stars. So, all right, I'm hitting the next key. Okay, and this is basically how we, whenever we go through and we're looking at tons of pictures when we shoot a wedding. I mean, when we do a wedding, we have shot like probably several thousand pictures over the course of a several hour a day, oftentimes 12 hour a day. And so we've shot literally like, you know, thousands of pictures, sometimes between five and 7,000 pictures. And so we're going through all these pictures. You don't want to process out all these pictures and certainly don't want to open all of those in Photoshop. So we pick the ones we like the best. And so we rate them. So we look through each one and we're just wanting to get the good one. So do I like that? Yep, that's good. In fact, here's what it looks like after I go to the next one here. And yep, that's a good one there. So I'm saying, yep, I like that there. I set the rating to one. Yeah, it's a beautiful image. That one's already been processed, but that's what it looks like before processing. So maybe we'll do a little processing on that one. And there's one that one's already processed. Well, I won't process all these, but I'll show you how you can copy and paste the processing. Yep, I like that. I liked it so much, I made it in my desktop. So I'm just going through, I'm hitting the one key. I like all these, that one's good. Although check it out right there, that's a little overexposed. So I'll show you how you can fix that. Going through, yep, I like that one. But plenty of me won't like. I actually picked some previously that I had liked. But I probably should have picked some that I don't like and just showed you how to leave those out. And so I clicked all those to Yes, I like all those, and I hit one on each one of those. Yes, I like them, or no, I don't like them. And then if you want to, you can actually go right down here where it says filter, and you can just say, give me just the rated ones. See this here? Give me just the rated ones. And so if I click that, 
it would say one star or higher. You saw that pop up right there. It means that, yeah, I like all these. But if you'd pick some one and some zero or some one, two, and three through five, and then zero, it would leave out all the zeros, the ones you don't like. And so that's what that does right there. So you just start looking at your good picks. Okay, so that's the library tab, by the way. And the library tab lets you, that's called culling, throwing out the ones that you don't like as much, keeping all the ones that you like more. And at this point, I'm gonna now click over to the develop tab. And all of my pictures are in here. So right through here, I have this, <clears throat> this develop tab that's right here that lets me look at a lot of different settings and if you remember we did a few of these in Photoshop in the last couple of lessons but with Lightroom it's all kind of in one place so let me pick some pictures this one was already processed so let me pick one that has not been processed I'm going to click through and show you maybe this picture right here and see if we can kind of make it look like that one okay it's a nice picture right there. The first thing we need to do is kick up some contrast. Remember how we did brightness and contrast in Photoshop? It was a whole separate menu thing. I can actually take this and I can turn that contrast up. Whoops. Went a little quick right there. I turned it up a little bit. My exposure is a little hot. Hot means slightly overexposed. Exposure, your exposure is your overall amount of light. Underexposure is not enough. Overexposure is too much. So this had just a little bit too much light. I can do that right there. Um, it looks like I want to pull my highlights down. Highlights are the brighter area, so I crank that down just a little bit. I thought it was getting a little too bright in there. I'm going to pull my shadows down. Ooh, it's already getting better, isn't it? I am going to pull my blacks way down because I really want... These are almost like silhouettes. Silhouettes are, are where it has like no detail in it, so I really want those to almost go like a dark brown or even a black. If you zoom into it, you can see there's detail in them, but not a ton, so I kind of wanted to just get kind of rich in there. Ooh, so that's looking good. Um, clarity, sat vibrance, and saturation has to do with, I call it your presence, but really it's how your colors look on your screen. So clarity is going to kind of make it look more clear. So I don't mind turning that up a little bit. And your vibrance, vibrance is kind of a neat thing. If you turn it up too high, it gets like, whoa! too much but a little bit of vibrance is a good thing and saturation is how intense your colors are you can oversaturate or sometimes under like if you turn it all the way down to zero it, it turns it black and white but there's better ways to turn it black and white for sure so sometimes I like things a little bit desaturated sometimes I like things a little bit punchy where I'll turn up the colors just a little bit not too much but maybe just a little bit I heard that groan in the back. That's my dog. I'll do a shot of my dog. He's back there sleeping. So I kind of like the way that looks right there. Not too much. I'm turning that up a little bit. And by the way, see how I'm actually setting these? You can actually turn your numbers. You can actually click on them and dial right in. Let's click, keep clicking down. And oops, you see how it was kind of a happy accident right there. I clicked and all my settings went away. What the heck happened there? It basically just means like you click on this little triangle and those will disappear. It's kind of like if you wanted to see it, eh, what's it look like without all that settings there? So it's this little triangle right here. All right, let's keep clicking down. Your tone curve, by the way, is a way to change a lot of the same things, but you could kind of do it with looking at a curve. And we haven't done curves yet in Photoshop, but we'll get to that probably next lesson. And your curves are, notice how this is a histogram. Remember how I talked about histograms in the last lesson? This is like a digital fingerprint of your image itself. And so it allows you to change your histogram. So as I click here, and incidentally, um, let me close that and open that one right there. You notice right here, here's an image of your histogram right here. And it shows how your, your RGB values are stacked up against each other. You can actually slide in your histogram, incidentally. I can kind of move that in there. I can literally change right inside of there. That's the cool thing about Lightroom is that you can click all inside of here and get all kinds of different things. You notice how I just kind of, I clicked and changed it a little bit. So I'm going to put my exposure back a little bit, right about there. And incidentally, I didn't talk about your temperature or your tint. That's your white balance. We talked a little bit about white balance, but that basically is your camera's attempt to kind of turn a white object white. But you can also play with it a little bit. And in here, it's really kind of call it your color balance. 
And so I can actually change the color. See, I could actually turn it to much more of a blue image. That almost looks like winter time, doesn't it? Or I could kind of turn that up a little bit and kind of make it look a little more fall. So you're actually able to change some things in here. So if I wanted to make it look kind of warmer, certainly that's the way it looks in the original. Look at that. You can always go, that almost looks like nighttime. You can go here and, wow, it kind of looks a little more summer. It shows a little more green. So you can actually change your color balance in here. So it's really a neat, neat, Thing you can do here. All right, I'm going to warm it a little bit, maybe about like that. And let's look through here. So yeah, we were able to actually change this a little bit right here on my tone curve. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And you can also slide this here and it changes this too. If like if I said, hey, my highlights are getting a little blown out, which they're really not, but I can click right there and turn that down. Each one of these things, you, you can make adjustments in all of these settings, and that's the beautiful thing about this. If I said my darks, notice how it already has settings set, because every time I change something in my histogram or in my or in my um, color or black and white, I haven't got to black and white yet, in my black and white tab, it's all right there. Whoops, I clicked that again, didn't I? I made it go away. So keep looking down here. So yeah, each one of these changes can be made, because see, each one is a different adjustment. So the thing that I can encourage you to do the most is to play in Lightroom. Just start clicking around in your images. And the one thing I haven't told you yet about Lightroom is that this is available on your mobile devices as well. I'll say that again. It's available on your mobile devices as well. So when we are able to um, get access to Adobe CC for all of you uh, kids, that's called Creative Cloud, because of the fact that you'll have an account where you're able to log in and get this on your phone. This, by the way, is Adobe Lightroom Classic. I didn't tell you that, but there is actually now a version that is designed to go from your computer to your phone. So you can take a picture with your phone and take it and do a little bit of work on your phone, and then you can bring it into your computer. And so we'll get some of that later. So there's a lot more. This is just the first initial walkthrough in this image in, in basically in Lightroom right here, and we're working on this image. So there's lots of more, th lots more things to do. And you notice there's even a black and white tab in here, and you kind of go, ooh, that looks kind of cool as a black and white. You can change things in here in black and white. Look at that. I can make that a beautiful, beautiful black and white. Remember how we talked about those exact same um, adjustments here? You saw some of these adjustments in your... Um, image last time to where you're changing your RGB values. Here they are again. Look at this. Although I don't think I want to do this image in black and white. So I can actually go back. And we're going to pause this here because my demo, this part of the demo is about ready to run out. So I'll pause one more time. All right. And we're back. And once again, I apologize for that. We're back on this image right here. Taking a look at it. Look, I can zoom at it. Zoom in on it, see how sharp those in, those um, trees are and the beautiful light coming through there. Very cool, very cool. Okay, there's lots of other things that I can show you about Lightroom, and it's one of those things that we'll continue to work on. But watch one thing. One thing that maybe bugs me is right here, it's a little bit bright. Watch what you can do. There's this brush that's right here, an adjustment brush. You know, if I said, you know, it's a little bit too bright there. Okay, I'm going to make that brush smaller because I don't want to get that big of an area so I can actually hit the bracket. Right about there. you got to make that funny noise, otherwise it doesn't work. So here's the bracket. That's a good one. I'm going to actually take my exposure down just a little bit so I can pull it down there. Oh, we'll maybe go about... Go about... Oh, that's about 0.6, which is about two-thirds of a stop. A stop is one unit of light. So we're going to do that, and I can just take that. You know what? As I look at that, that's too much. So I'm going to undo that. Actually, I don't even have to undo it. I just painted right there. Watch what I can do. Oh, look. I can take it, and let's take it down maybe about point... Maybe about right there. That, and I can kind of just bring that down so that's not... Not too bright, it doesn't stand out. Remember, people are drawn to light objects, like fish. We're drawn to light objects, so we go, oh, look there. But I don't want them to look there. I want them to look there. All right. More things to do, more things to do. I can basically, whenever I'm done with that, I can say done, and it'll finish up with that mask. Let's keep 
walking through Photoshop here, we finished off with our curves right there. Lots of other things you can do. Oops, I did that again. Um, there is a black and white tab, as I showed you. I'm just finished with that, but I don't want this image black and white, but if you want to play with that a little bit, you absolutely can. HSL is U, saturation, and luminance. So in the saturation, you can increase the saturation or decrease it of like specific colors. You can see how I can, if I wanted to pump up those reds a little bit, I can do that. U is changing the U. U is a color, and so it's actually changing the color. Again, I can basically, you notice how as I slide this back and forth, I can do that. And here's another magic thing about um, Lightroom is that you can actually click on this little tab right here. It looks like a little tiny target. All right. You can actually click on that and I can literally change the U by clicking inside that. Look at that. I just pulled it way down. Now, obviously that's way too much, but you see how just by doing that, it completely moved all of those colors in that area. I told it, I said, go right here and then completely boom, turn them way up. Now I'm going to undo that. Control Z will undo that. Maybe I want a little bit. Actually, as I looked at that, eh, not too bad bringing up some of that warmth. So I'm going to pull it down just a hair, pulling it down a little bit. You see these numbers gradually changing here. Hey, I think I like that even more. So anytime you see that little target thingy, you can actually make changes to just that specific color or that area in the picture. So I'm going to click Done. Whenever you're done with it, I'm going to keep clicking down. Now we could spend all day working on this, but um, one of the last things I want to tell you is sharpening. You can actually sharpen your image in here. Remember how we talked about sharpening the previous two Photoshop uh, lessons? Sharpening means it adds, I'll say, crispness to your image. Okay, so you can actually turn the sharpening up and down right here. I can put up, put in a tiny amount right here. A little goes a long ways with sharpening. I'm going to zoom into it just so we can really see it. And you can go right there like that. So there we go. All right, we're going to keep clicking. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. And the last thing I want to show you in here is under the Effects tab, there's a thing called your um, post-crop vignetting. So if I needed to crop the image at all, Remember how we talked about cropping a little bit? Here's your crop tool right here. Like if I wanted to, eh, let's get rid of maybe a little bit of that or not. You could crop right inside of here because I told you previously, it's as important what you eliminate from your pictures as what you include into your pictures. So that's what cropping is right there. And so I could crop in there. But then when I went to the vignette tab, let me go ahead and slide this down here. When I went to the vignette tab, It'll actually do post crop vignetting. Let me click this so it knows that I'm all done with my cropping. So vignetting is, remember, it's kind of like kind of darkening down your image to look right there. So I can actually click right there on it and slide that down. Look at that. Remember how we had to do like four or five steps to make a vignette? I can actually do this here. And again, you're telling your brain, look right here. So I can actually go to the amount. I can change the feather on it. And that's the transition from from the effect to not having the effect. So there you go. Kind of like that right there. You can play with some other things on it. And you might go, okay, so that's kind of cool right there. Now we could spend all day doing this, but one of the cool things about this is you can actually apply these settings. So that's the one that I did, and that was the one before. Wow, amazing, I actually kind of matched that. That was the one that I just did. The cool thing about Lightroom is that I could I probably should have adjusted this one because I could actually apply all of those settings to these same pictures and the way that I would do it let's let's pretend that I made some adjustments to this all right I don't want this demo to go on all day so you can basically make some some changes to it see I can do this here and let's pretend I made a bunch of other things and then I changed the white balance and color and all that it's kind of cool there let's put a vignette on there all right so I'm clicking down here really quick. I know I'm going super fast on this image, but let's say I would paint this down and I would change a bunch of other things on it. But let's say I wanted the same setting on everything. I can actually then cruise down here. Let me close this down here. 
I can actually click here, and then if I click on, here's another picture right here that's very similar. And if I said, I want those same settings here, I can click the Sync tab, and I'll click, and it will say, I'm going to change all these settings on that next picture. So I go Synchronize, and it's thinking for a second, and now all of a sudden, let me click off that, let me click to the next one. Hey, look, it put those same settings on the next picture. So that's why I remember how I said, like, if you take a trip up to Yosemite or Kings Canyon with your family or go to the coast, you can do a bunch of pictures. As long as the lighting's the same, as long as your color balance is the same, you can do the pictures all at the same time. And so, look, I didn't have to touch that picture. I just copied and pasted. Then you can actually go in and say, you know what, I want to fix this a little bit. And you could actually make a couple of changes here and there. And then you have your pictures all done. So that's kind of a neat thing. Now here's the other thing. All right, we're almost done here. If I went to File, Save, oh my gosh, where's the save at? How come there isn't a save here? Whoa, where is it? It's not there. It's an export. So if I click on all these, you have to click on all the ones you want to process out. And I hold, held on the Shift key. And if I said, I want to save all those. Again, it's not a save, it's an export. So I go, Export. To finish my pictures and it says would you like to put them in the same folder as the original photo mm -hmm. let's do that i'll put them in a subfolder marked you can rename it yosemite um pics and i'll cruise down and i'll say rename it too what do i want to call it i can call it remember how you have to put a name on everything that you turn in i'll call it j stafford and I'm going to say YOS for Yosemite, because I shot all these pics in Yosemite. I'm going to say Yo Yos, and start it with number one. And so here's an example. It's going to say J Stafford Yos 1. So when you turn in pictures of, say, your motion assignment, it's going to say motion one. It's going to say motion two. So that's a cool thing. I keep cruising down. I'm going to make them JPEGs. I'm going to keep cruising down. I'm going to say, if I already put sharpening in, I won't, wouldn't want to resharpen. But if I didn't sharpen, remember I didn't resharpen all these other pictures, so I can actually just say sharpen for. You want to sharpen them for a matte paper. But if you already sharpened them, I kind of already sharpened one, but I'm showing you how to sharpen all of yours. Um, but if you already did it, I kind of like being able to slide it around and, and tailor each picture for what I think it needs. But if you didn't sharpen them at all, put sharpening on here because it's going to make your pictures a little crisper. So you're going to cruise down then. And then you're going to say export. And so Lightroom is currently thinking. See that right there? It's saying I'm thinking here and I'm exporting. That's where you put the Jeopardy theme in there. It's thinking. It's still thinking. Thinking. Oh, it's almost done. It's almost done. It's almost done. And it just finished. Notice how that thing went away right there. I am now going to close this. And then check it out. I can actually then click into my folder here. And I can go into my picture folder. In my picture folder, there was a it was in the Lightroom demo folder. And look, it made a folder for me because I told it to. And I go to Yosemite Picks and look at this. Here they all are. And I actually did, uh, I don't want to open Photoshop. I am going to instead right click and I'm going to say open with um, photos. That's just a photo viewer. And so look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. And there's the other one. So Lightroom, it's a really cool thing. You're going to like it. I want you to start clicking around on it and kind of learning all of the cool things about it. I'm closing Photoshop right here because it accidentally opened Photoshop because I clicked on it. But yes, as we view this in the viewer, see how each one's a little different? I didn't end up processing those out, but I could have. Remember how I processed those just super quick in about 10 seconds? I would spend a lot more time on them and I would have fixed that. But you see how in this Yosemite picture that we did right here in the valley? Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Lightroom, it's a cool thing. Dig into it. You'll like it. See ya.